Anyone expecting DreamWorks' first live-action remake to be Shrek, B-Movie, or Megamind has just been proven wrong. I just made a video about the facts of why this movie is probably just a rumor, but now that it's confirmed, I'm going to explore the problems stacked against it. Because I'm really confused, and I don't think this is a guaranteed hit. <coughs> Starting with the medium. Jumping from one medium to another would make changes. It can even imply there should be changes, that the new one can do better than the old. Each medium is chosen for a reason, and it has strengths and weaknesses. So what should be changed? Why make it in live action? What would that improve? The thing is, DreamWorks has made live action movies, but that's separate from DreamWorks animation. They've never taken one of their animated movies and adapted it to live action. And they've chosen a heck of a time to do it, because Disney has been pumping out their live action remakes, and people are getting pretty tired of them. So what would happen? You'd lose a lot of the personality in the design, much of which comes from the books, and I'll get to them later. So it would lose that appeal. Is the animation going to improve? A live-action movie with CGI is completely different from a CGI movie. Is the realism going to improve? Considering how visceral the animation is already, especially the flying scenes, I think adapting it to live-action would actually make it feel more... fake. Even if you're not looking for it, you might feel the green screen, the physics changes from a real actor to a CG double. They can use puppets and animatronics like the live show, and by the way, they made a live show, or Jurassic Park, but that can only get you so far. The style of humor and the tone overall would probably have to change because I don't think it would translate. Voice acting allows for more creativity. Someone can make himself sound bigger, or it can be funny. A little guy can voice a big guy. Animation has advantages. Animation can have goofy, exaggerated sizes and shapes that make it more dramatic and still have impressive textures without creating an uncanny valley effect. If they make it in live action, you get regular sized people, a visual effects budget for a movie that would require a ton of CGI, and you'll constantly have to compare the live action actors and props to the CGI ones. The quality will vary from shot to shot. Some excited fans are already getting their hopes up, imagining something like Avatar 2, a movie James Cameron says had to make two billion dollars just to break even. It's not the same because almost everything in Avatar is CGI, but it still takes time and money to make it look this great, and I'll come back to that later. Do not expect this. This is a great franchise, but it does not have the strength for that. This isn't Avatar, it's not Star Wars. What direction will they go? The movies are different from the books, so will this be more book accurate? Or a complete retread of the original, which is a choice people generally don't like. I know some book fans say the books are actually better suited to live action, but from what I've seen with the art style, the humor, and the talking dragons, it seems even more fit for animation than what we got. But obviously, I don't know it that well. The irony is, they pushed the animation to feel real to make a live action style animated movie with the intense shadows and textures most animation doesn't have. There's also the risk of committing to the books this time, but skewing them, whereas the original movie intentionally went in a different direction. They're different and they coexist. But if your book series, animated movies, and live action movies are all different, you confuse the audience. What? Which is the last thing you want to do. Now where are they? Here's a problem I have with these continuations. If it's the same as the original, but any worse, why would I pay to see a worse version of the same thing? There has to be a need. So what is the need? It's not a movie that never got a sequel. It's a very recent, full franchise. And it's not a series that needs another sequel to finish things off. They committed to a trilogy, and they gave it an ending. I think the real need, besides money, is relevance. There's the Universal theme park they've been building for several years now, which they probably should have done about 10 years ago, after the original was a hit with a successful TV show with sequels on the way. I guess that's still money. The reason the original worked so well is long gone. It had to work. The directors came into the project late. After everyone had been cast, characters and locations had been designed, a composer had been hired, and there was a release date just over a year away. They had to whip the movie into shape to meet a deadline, to save it. Gerard Butler and Craig Ferguson today. 
No. Going from feeling like, wow, we've done so much, to feeling like we haven't done anything. Craig Ferguson and Gerard Butler today, and Jay, you know, Jay today, Jay. Where's the father-son relationship? I don't see it. Nice ending, just missing the story that gets us here. That's because there isn't one. Jay today, Jay both days. Is it everybody both days? This is the saddest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Jay and then Craig and then Craig and Gerard. That means the scenes I'm writing are all of them. The urgency is gone. It took a lot of work and maybe some loss of sleep. Is that a vacuum cleaner? On their balcony? That's weird. An ironic problem they're facing, the fans. Most of the reactions I'm seeing are very negative, or mixed at best. People are angry, actually. Some are even calling Dean DeBlas a hypocrite and a sellout for calling live-action remakes, lazy on the part of the studio, and while we still don't know much about this, the article confirming the story does refer to it as a remake. People are mad that it feels like they're drawing attention away from animation instead of highlighting it. When you're making a movie with a built-in fanbase, it should help instead of hurt. You don't want fans dragging their feet to the theater or skipping it. You want them excited. Here's an example from my perspective. John Powell is returning. Some are excited about his return, but believe it or not, I'm not. At least so far. Maybe that's just me, or maybe that says something considering, you know, I've been known to like his stuff. I'd rather see what new things he can do, like with The Call of the Wild. And they play the movie in concert, and sometimes he makes an appearance, but they've only done it in a handful of cities. It's just never been very close to me. They just had one in Switzerland, that's a bit of a drive from here. Maybe I'll be more excited about his involvement two years from now. And speaking of, the narrow time frame is another issue. It's already set for March 2025, just two years from now, which is not long. That CGI might not be bad, but don't expect Avatar quality. How many years of post did you guys spend on Avatar 2? Official post, once we stopped filming, two years. How about unofficial post? Uh, seven years? I can't speak for everyone, but I think it's way too soon to do any kind of nostalgia-fueled revival. It's been barely over 10 years since the first movie. The third one came out in 2019, and a spin-off series started at the end of 2021. I feel like it just happened, is happening, and just ended all at once. Fans talk about it. It's not forgotten. And considering what most of my videos are about, it still feels very current to me. Plus, it just makes things feel even more shallow if the third movie was about letting go and moving on, and now they just keep bringing it back. They made a great movie, they turned it into a great franchise, and it ended. I was already satisfied. As for some silver linings, maybe it'll be great? Maybe they have some incredible plan. I know Deblas is very creative and had a huge hand in the design and direction of the sequels. There's a lot more he could do. It's probably good that it has the same director and composer, that at least it could be in worse hands. But there's still a lot to appreciate in the originals, and there's so much in the music most people don't know. Like how Powell's themes tell the story almost exactly like an E.T., which I went over in this video. It's different from what most fans think. And please like the video if you liked it, or if you're as confused as I am. Or this lady. Now they're flying? What?